This rebuild is going to be a bit different. I have already rebuilt the Detroit Lions, and we were successful in that rebuild, winning a Super Bowl in the last year. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit different. I'll tell you what I mean by that in a minute, but before we get into today's video, the last video pretty easily hit 10 likes, so let's shoot for 15 on this video. And if we can hit that, I will have a new video out as soon as we hit that goal. And again, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I know it's not a ton, but it means a lot to me. And be sure to sub if you have not already, and turn on notifications for my channel so you can get notified whenever I upload. Of course, you can turn it off whenever too. And big shout out to actually a few people for this video. We have Jordan Mayton, we have Joe Mama, nice name. And I thought there was another one, but apparently I'm just a dumbass. So shout out to those two. I of course dropped them a sub. I put their link in the description, go sub to those two. And if you want to shout out just like that one, let me know what team you want me to rebuild next or what type of rebuild you want me to do next. Or just any football related video in general, it can be pretty much anything. Whatever you like seeing, let me know, cause I'm sure I will like making it. But that is enough plugging for this video. Let's get into the breakdown of this team and the reveal of what I'm going to be doing for this rebuild, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Hello everyone, it is Brandon the Simp here, and today we're going to be rebuilding the Detroit Lions once again. Now, because we have already done this team, and because we were already successful with this team, I am of course going to be doing something a little bit different. That thing is, I am going to be going extra hard in this rebuild. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I am going to kind of ignore realism a little bit more, and I decided I'm going to try to do one blockbuster trade per year. Now we'll see, depending on the situation I'm in at the time, how blockbuster that trade needs to be, or can be really. But yeah, basically I just want to make this team as good as I can possibly get it, because Lions fans kind of deserve it. I mean, there are fan bases like the Jets fan base, or the Jags fan base, where they're just like toxic people, but I feel like Lion, Lions fans deserve a little bit, uh, better. I'm sorry, Jags or Jets fans, I'm sure you people watching me are fine people because you are watching me, but most of your fan base is pretty toxic. So that is the plan for this rebuild, but let's get into a breakdown of the team here. So obviously, the elephant in the room, or the Californian in the room, I guess, I don't know. Jared Goff. Now, personally, I don't think Jared Goff is as bad as people say he is. I mean, there was that one year where he was very good, and people said, you know, he was better than Russell Wilson. I was like, you're fucking high, and clearly, you know, I was kind of right, but still, I don't think Jared Goff is bad, because he has shown years like that. Now, that year, it was basically just Sean McVay being in his mind pretty much the whole year, and Jared Goff's physical ability, I guess you could say. So the physical ability is there. It's just, again, it's kind of a mental thing. So I think Dan Campbell's a good coach. I think he can get the most out of Jared Goff here. And what certainly will help is this very high potential offense around him. They have a very good offensive line. Obviously drafting Panay Sewell in last year's draft, who was very good as a rookie, Arguably the best center in the NFL in Frank Ragnow, a very solid left tackle in Taylor Decker, and solid guards in Hal Vitae and Jonah Jackson. Obviously having one of the better tight ends in the NFL in TJ Hawkinson, and I think tight end is the most important position other than maybe like tackle for a quarterback's development. It just gives them that safe check down where instead of them making a mistake, they can just look to their tight end who is a safer target, if that makes any sense. Which it probably doesn't because I'm bad at explaining things, but you know, I try. They also added Devin Funchess and moved him to tight end, which is really weird. I didn't think he was that bad as a receiver. I think he could be an okay tight end, but I, d I don't know. Their receiving core is actually very solid too. One of the more underrated receivers in the NFL in DJ Chark, they just added in this offseason. I believe this past year he was hurt, and it was just a weird year for the Jaguars. I mean, a lot of their players really underperformed based on where I thought they would play. But DJ Chark we saw just a couple years ago was a very surprisingly good receiver. I didn't think he was very good coming out of LSU, but... 
be really surprised. And now I honestly think he is underrated. So we'll see if he can break out here. It might be a bit hard though with Among Us St. Brown, aka Amon Ross St. Brown. I'm just immature, so I think Among Us St. Brown is really funny. But he was a pretty good rookie. I think he was a touch overrated last year. I'm not gonna lie. He was good. He wasn't like as good as some people think, but I do think he was very good. Another player that I wasn't very high on coming out, but they actually he actually did surprise me a lot. So we'll see what he can do in year number two. And a wide receiver I am very high on in Jamison William. One of the better deep threats of the past few years. I mean, I guess there was a player like, oh God, why can't I remember his name? Jamar Chase, Jesus Christ, dude. I am fucking exhausted, bro. But yeah, Jamison Williams is a comparable player to like Deshaun Jackson or something. Mans is very fast and a very good deep threat. And I think he will be an amazing NFL player. They obviously also have DeAndre Swift, who is a very good running back. Jamal Williams is also a good running back too. I kind of want to try to speed this up a bit, a bit so I can get through this, but they obviously added Deshaun Elliott from the Ravens. I do think he is a very underrated safety. Tracy Walker is a solid player too, obviously drafting Kirby Joseph this year. I'm going to give him star dev, I just forgot to, but a pretty solid safety out of Illinois. I'm not super high on him, I'm not necessarily low on him, I just think he's solid. Their linebacking core is pretty bad, however I do kind of like Alex Anzalone and I think Derek Barnes actually has some potential. Jared Davis technically does, signing back with the Lions, but he's more of just a run defender. This cornerback room is a concern, however I do like the players they have here. Jeff Okuda was I believe the number two overall pick. But he started off really bad and then got back-to-back -back injuries, so people kind of forgot about him. But I think he still can be an amazing player. I mean, he was the number two overall pick for a reason, I guess. I thought he was overdrafted, but he was still very good. Amani Aruwarie is also another underrated player, and Mike Hughes was actually sneakily good last year. So I think he can surprise some people. And obviously their first choice this year in Aiden Hutchinson, he is a very good player. He's not a player that has the most upside in the world, but he is a very powerful pass rusher. I would almost make a comparison with him to Jadavion Clowney. I guess that's not a bad comparison. I think I said that in the last video I did of this team, but that's just a quick, not too much thinking about it comparison. <laughs> Romeo Okwara, when healthy, is a borderline like top 15 pass rusher in the league. I don't know if I want to say that much, but he is very good when healthy, of course. I'm very high on a lot of players on this team, if you couldn't tell. Charles Harris finally broke out last year for the Detroit Lions, obviously drafted by, I believe, the Miami Dolphins in like 2017 or 18. He was pretty good last year. This defensive tackle group is bad. I'm not the biggest fan of Michael Brockers. I never really was. But Aleem McNeil and Levi Onzerike do have a lot of upside. So overall with this team, it just screams a lot of potential. I mean, you have a quarterback that has shown that he can be good with a lot of weapons that have a potential to break out this year. A good offensive line, a good tight end, a good running back room, and a defense that has a lot of players that either broke out last year or are primed to break out this year. So I am very excited for this team. And let's get into year number one of this rebuild. And I'm gonna find a big blockbuster trade to do. I really don't know what to say about this, I'm gonna be honest. I never thought in a million years this would go through. <laughs> but here we are adding Kyler Murray for only a first round pick and Charles Harris. I did this because Kyler Murray, obviously there have been trade rumors with the Arizona Cardinals, obviously. I don't necessarily think he would be interested in playing for Detroit, and I don't think Detroit would necessarily be too interested in trading for him. But I guess I definitely won't be putting realistic in this title because of this trade right here. I'm gonna do one more trade after this, actually. <laughs> I am terribly sorry if you are a Cardinals fan and you are watching this, because we are trading Jared Goff, the goofball, Hal Vitae, and a third round pick to the Arizona Cardinals for their first round pick. So we basically scammed the Cardinals. We traded them Charles Harris, Jared Goff, Hal Vitae, and a third round pick for Kyler Murray. And then we switched, we swapped our first round picks. And we don't know what those picks are gonna be yet, where they're gonna be placed. So we basically just traded Jared Goff, Hal Vitae, 
Charles Harris in a third round pick for Kyler Murray. That's that's something. Here is a look at the team going into year number one of the rebuild, obviously adding Kyler Murray. Now I know the whole thing I was saying for the intro of this video is that Jared Goff is in a good situation, but hey, adding a better quarterback definitely doesn't hurt. But yeah, everything is relatively the same. We are going to be starting Ali Udo as our right guard this year because obviously we traded Hal Vitae. So the extra nice part about that trade is that we didn't even really lose many starters, only one starter, and it wasn't a very good starter. So let's see how this team can perform year one, and I will see you guys for the midseason point of year number one. Huh. Well, at the midseason point of year number one, we are 0-7. Huh. All right, what's happening with the team? Does Kyler Murray suck? Yeah, kinda, yeah. 1,800 yards, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Not ideal. 58% completion percentage, that is not good. DeAndre Swift is underperforming. Only 3.5 yards per carry, two fumbles isn't ideal. DJ Chark and TJ Hawkinson are doing very well. Our line is doing well other than Jonah Jackson. Aiden Hutchinson is doing very well, in terms of sacks at least. Derek Barnes has a ton of tackles for loss. We only have four interceptions, but sometimes that's all you get for a whole season, so I guess you kind of take that. So maybe we should have kept Jared Goff, as weird as that is to say. As terrible as that is. But it's only year one. Normally year one doesn't go very well anyways, but in terms of re-signings, there isn't really anyone here that I really want. I mean, maybe I'll just re-sign. I, I, I can get a better kicker than Riley Patterson. Yeah, there's really nobody here at all that I really want back. So we'll just sim out the rest of the season and we'll try to forget that this year ever happened. So we do actually finish the year five and 12. Definitely a lot better than we were looking at the midseason point, but obviously still not ideal. So Kyler Murray did finish the year much, much better than he started it, ending with 4,700 yards, 36 touchdowns, 14 interceptions is a lot, but how the year was looking, that's, that's not too bad, I'll take that. For rushing, DeAndre Swift wasn't good at all. Only 800 yards, 3.8 yards per carry, nine touchdowns is okay, and five fumbles, that's a lot. In terms of receiving, DJ Chark had the most yards on our team with 1,100, and he had nine touchdowns. TJ Hawkinson had over a thousand yards with 10 touchdowns, so he was very good. Among Us St. Brown had almost a thousand yards with five touchdowns, and Jamison Williams had almost a thousand yards with eight touchdowns. So, very good year in terms of receiving. In terms of blocking, Taylor Decker ended up letting up the most sacks, but only with nine at left tackle is pretty good. Jonah Jackson, I would say, was our worst lineman, letting up seven sacks from the left guard position. Panay Sewell only letting up seven sacks is pretty good, considering I think he let up like 20 in a year in our last rebuild of this team, so not great, but here he was good. And Frank Ragnow and Oli Udo were very good. Frank Ragnow only letting up two sacks, or sorry, only letting up three sacks, and then Oli Udo only letting up two sacks as now a 69 nice overall. Alex Anzalone led the team in tackles with 143. In terms of tackles for loss, Aiden Hutchinson had an amazing year with 20 tackles for loss. Derek Barnes with 17, and then for sacks, Aiden Hutchinson had 12, but our next highest was only four with Romeo Aquara. Derek Barnes had three and a half. That is a potential defensive player of the year season. Maybe not, but that was a really good year. Jared Davis also had a good year. This team performed pretty well despite being 5-12. and 12. And in terms of interceptions, Jeff Okuda ended up with four. Deshaun Elliott and Jalen Reeves Mabin each had two, and then a number of players had one. So let's check yearly awards here. MVP goes to Aaron Rodgers. Interesting. I guess you don't really see that much, and ha, ah, that's tough. Jared Goff comes in at number four. Hmm. <laughs> I... I hate my life. Oh, Kyler Murray does come in at number six. However, I guess it probably would have been better to stick with Jared Goff? I don't know. It was only year one. We'll see what happens in the coming seasons. Aaron Rodgers wins NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Jared Goff, of course, at number two. And Kyler Murray gets fourth, so that's pretty good. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Isaiah Simmons. Interesting. So, another Cardinals player. 
just to rub it in my face. Aiden Hutchinson comes in at number five, so it looks like he has a chance at Defensive Rookie of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Desmond Ritter. Jamison Williams comes in at number six. Among Us St. Brown comes in at number seven, even though he wouldn't be a rookie in this world. And Defensive Rookie of the Year does go to Aiden Hutchinson. Derek Barnes, again, wouldn't be a rookie, but he comes in at number five, and no other Lion. Cole Beasley on the Packers wins Best Receiver. That's interesting. And Aiden Hutchinson comes in at number three for best D lineman. And Jeff Okuda comes in at number three for best DB. That's pretty cool. So let's get into the off season here. Obviously, I want to make a big trade. I guess I'll do that at the start of next year though, but let's see what we can do to make this team a little better. I would say the biggest problems with this team were the lack of pressure and I guess the passing at the start of the year, but I don't really know what to do about that. I might look for maybe... Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. I think I'll save what I was going to say for maybe the trade that I do. But let's get into this offseason and let's look for some pieces to fill out this team. So in free agency, the main player I want to go for is Mike Williams. However, I guess in my rosters, I don't have his current contract updated or something because he should not be a free agent. He got paid. So... I am not going to go for him, despite how much I want to. Uh, you know what? This is my rebuild. I'm going to try and sign him. So in free agency, like usual, I'm going after the legend Matt Gay, because I'm very mature and Matt Gay is a funny name to me. And obviously we are going to be going after Mike Williams. I'm actually going to bump down his contract a little bit because the amount of money we were offering him was absurd. It's still pretty absurd, but we were going to pay him like $25 million a year almost. I think 22 is kind of a better deal or 20 whatever that is i can't math right now my brain is off so we'll see if we can get those two players and after that i will see you guys for the 2023 nfl draft so we do get both of those players so not really any dev ups on the offensive side of the ball but on defense derek barnes went up to a star dev and aiden hutchinson actually went up to superstar which is very nice obviously he had an amazing rookie year i think honestly jeff okuda also should have gotten a superstar dev but it's fine he'll will live will survive but let's get into the draft and hopefully there are some good players for us to take. Here in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York Giants actually have the number one overall pick, and we have the number 10 pick. So let's see what we can do here. I think I'm going to take Jameel Kirkpatrick. He's 6'2", 247, only 22 years old out of West Virginia. You're in a 4-5-3 at the Combine, which was very good, and put up 23 reps on the bench, which is also very good. He doesn't look particularly great or even good, but I like the A awareness, and obviously I like his speed. So let's take him, and he does have hidden dev. Okay, cool. Even if he didn't, he probably would have started for us, but yeah, he looks like a very good player. And with this next pick, I think I'm going to take Jamison Howard. He is 6'2", 267, only 21 years old, out of Kansas State. He ran a 4.68 at the Combine, put up 24 reps on the bench. He has A awareness, A pursuit, B tackle. I think he's a pass rusher, but because Madden sucks, I don't know his coverage ability or his pass rush ability, so I don't really know at all, but let's take him. And unfortunately, he does only have normal dev. Now, I was going to take him with that first pick, and I am glad I didn't, because there was a chance we wouldn't have gotten that other player. He does look like a good player, but just the lack of a dev trait is unfortunate. With this next pick, I think I'm going to take another linebacker. I clearly have a goal in this draft, and that goal is to get just as many linebackers as I can and just fill out the worst position on this team, I guess. I am going to go with Lamar Mitchell. He's 6'3", 228, only 22 years old out of Illinois. He ran a 4.53 at the Combine and put up 26 reps on the bench, which is very nice. So he's fast and he's strong. And he has B awareness, B play rec. Most of his stats we don't actually know, at least the important ones like block shed, coverage, tackling, pursuit. But we do know he is at least an athletic player with good awareness. So let's take him. And he does unfortunately have normal dev, but as you can see, he is a very fast and strong linebacker. Not incredibly strong, but pretty strong. 
So I'm very happy with that pick. And let's get into the next pick. I think that one's gonna be my last. Actually, we don't even have a pick until the fifth round. I think I'm just gonna take Jaden Nelson. I was gonna look for a safety, but unfortunately there aren't any good free safeties, which is the position I need more but he looks all right. 23 years old, out of Michigan. He ran a 4-6 flat at the combine, 15 reps on the bench. C awareness, B block shed. It's the fifth round. I mean, these are the type of players I expected here. Let's just take him. And yeah, he has normal dev. I do think he could be a decent overall, like a 69-ish, nice, but we'll see. But let's get into the draft recap. I will sim out the rest and hopefully we made some good picks. Yikes, this was not a very good draft. So our first pick at number 10 overall, Jamil, Pat Jamil Kirkpatrick, was only a 69 overall, which is nice, of course. He does have the hidden de dev, obviously, but yeah, he's just not quite as good as I thought he would be. I guess the main problem with him is his coverage ability, and his block shedding isn't very good, but I'm just more concerned about the coverage. He is listed as a field general, and typically field generals are at least okay in coverage, but yeah, I guess he's just more of a pure run defender. Our next pick though was a little better, however he does unfortunately on only have normal dev like we saw earlier. He is a power rusher though, so I was definitely right about him being a pass rusher. He has 83 speed, 89 excel, pretty balanced pass rush moves, 76 finesse, 80 power. He has 80 pursuit, 77 block shed. He looks like a really good player. Obviously we're gonna play him at defensive end where he does actually stay at a 75, so that's good. At least he doesn't go down. I thought he could have gone up, but I will definitely take not going down, I guess, unless it's on your mother. Uh, anyways, Lamar Mitchell is also a 69 overall. We have a lot of nice players in this draft because I'm really immature. But once again, another very fast linebacker who just isn't good in coverage. He doesn't really look all that great though, other than being fast and strong. I mean, he has good tackling and I guess he has good hit power, but everything else is kind of, kind of cheeks. So we'll see what to do with him. We kind of just drafted Derek Barnes again basically, but faster, I guess. <clears throat> and Jaden Nelson is a bit worse than I thought he would be. His coverage is really bad. He's also, funny enough, basically a linebacker. I mean, he's undersized for linebacker, but he has good tackling, good pursuit, good hit power, and not good coverage. He basically is very similar to the linebackers that we took. And then the CPU took a couple pretty bad players that probably won't even make the team. So with that, it is time for me to do my big trade of this year, my blockbuster trade, if you will. You will see who that will be for in a second. Honestly, I don't really know. I know the position, but I don't know exactly who. It just depends on who we can get. But let's go do that trade, and I think you guys will like it. All right. And just like that, we are adding cornerback JC Jackson over from the LA Chargers in return for Romeo Aquara and the 10th overall pick this year. The projected 10th overall pick, which I don't think is gonna be quite that good because I do believe that is the Rams pick and typically they perform pretty well in this game. Not as well as they do in real life, but they do all right. Now, unfortunately, we are trading Romeo Aquara, but he was a very expensive player. It saves us $14.5 million per year to trade him. So I think that was the right move. And he just doesn't really perform in this game. In real life, I would not make this trade, but in Madden, definitely. And the reason I wanted a cornerback is because just in general, it's harder to develop them than most positions into a corner of JC Jackson's level. So if you can't develop a player into that, then just go and trade for a player of that level. And that's what we did. So that is a very cool trade in my opinion. And let's get into year number two of the rebuild. Here is a look at the team going into year number two of the rebuild. Obviously pretty different from the team we started with. The main differences obviously are Kyler Murray now being our quarterback, obviously who was kind of disappointing last year, but towards the end of the year, he kind of turned it around a little bit, so we'll see what he can do in year two. Adding Mike Williams in free agency, I'm not 100% sure if that was the best idea because he was very expensive, but he should at least be a good player for us, and it's nice to have a true number one now. And Ollie Udo was actually surprisingly good. 
as a starter for us, so that was interesting. We'll see if he can repeat there. The linebacking core is pretty different now. I think I'm gonna start the rookie Lamar Mitchell as our left outside linebacker. Jameel Kirkpatrick will be our middle linebacker, and then I think I'll play Derek Barnes as kind of like a sub linebacker maybe, or I don't know, I'll find some way to get Mitchell, Kirkpatrick, Barnes, and Anzalone involved. Kirby Joseph will be our starting free safety for this year. I don't know how I feel about him as our deep free safety, but well, it's Madden, so it's not going to be that deep, probably. We drafted Jamison Howard this year, who will hopefully be a good player as a rookie, and hopefully will provide a little more pressure than some of the other players we had did, and obviously adding JC Jackson in a trade a few minutes ago was a very good move. I don't like the number 35 for him, but I doubt his number's available, so we'll just keep that. So yeah, overall this team is looking very good, much much better than it looked in year one, at least at the very beginning of year one. But let's get into year number two of this rebuild, and I will see you guys at the midseason point. Words cannot describe how much I despise this game. At the midseason point of year number two, we are fucking one in five. I want to die. <laughs> what is the problem with this team? Because, lord help me, I will bench them in a half of a second. Kyler Murray is playing like shit once again. Who would have guessed? He's not very good in this game for some reason. DeAndre Swift isn't playing well either. Only 289 yards halfway through the year. 3.5 yards per carry. That is disgusting. Jamison Williams is having a really good year. Not many touchdowns because Kyler sucks, but still... Mike Williams also is doing pretty well. He has more touchdowns. That makes sense. Taylor Decker is playing like ass, but the rest of the line... Jonah Jackson, Panay Sewell, and Oli Udo are amazing. Zero sacks each all year. I've actually never seen that. In the defense, Jamison Howard's actually leading the team in sacks. Alex Anzalone has two and a half for some reason, tied for second, okay. And interceptions, we traded for JC Jackson because he's a good like ball hawking corner and he has one interception, that's fun. So we are 30th in offense and ninth in defense. I wouldn't really trust those numbers too much because the offense is gonna be lower than it really is and the defense is gonna be higher because we've only played six games, because we had an early bye while most teams have played seven. Like see, almost every team here has played seven games, just a few have played only six. So I can't really go too much off of those numbers, but either way, this team is not doing well at all. We have an upgrade here, or a few upgrades actually, just some, some players I guess, TJ Hawkinson goes up, that's pretty cool. And we have players ready to negotiate. What's going on here? So I guess I'll bring Amani Arawarie back because he's cheap and he'll be a good fourth corner and he doesn't accept. Go fuck yourself. Is there anyone else I really want back here? I mean, it's kind of just depth pieces. I don't really need any of these players that much, so I probably won't bring anyone there back. I might do my blockbuster trade for next year early. All right, so admittedly, I was gonna trade for a running back because DeAndre Swift is doing absolutely terribly, but running backs in this game are very, very expensive, so I'm not gonna be doing that, I guess. We're just gonna stick it out with this team and reassess at the end of the year. Based on how Kyler Murray does, not to spoil anything, but we'll assess our options at the quarterback position at the end of the year, I guess I'll say. So we'll sim to the end of the year. Hopefully we can rebound, or hopefully we do so bad that we get like the number one overall pick. I don't wanna finish mid. I wanna be either terrible or amazing. So let's sim to the end of the year, and hopefully we're amazing. All right, at the end of year number two, we finished seven and 10. Let's see what went wrong with this team. Everything that could have gone wrong essentially went wrong. So Kyler Murray, again, was not very good. 4,900 yards, 30 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Not very good. I mean, the yards were solid, but the touchdowns weren't great at all, and the interceptions were pretty high. So I'm pretty disappointed with that. DeAndre Swift, however, finished the season very well, getting up to almost 1,000 yards. Four yards per carry isn't ideal. You would want typically like 4.5 plus, but I guess four is better than the 3.5 he had, and 16 touchdowns with zero fumbles is pretty good. However, I don't think I'm gonna fall for the bait, because I know if I stick with him next year, he'll suck, so I think I'm still gonna look for 
a running back this year. The receiving was amazing. Jameson Williams had 1,400 yards and unfortunately only five touchdown touchdowns, but that's because Kyler kind of sucked. Mike Williams had 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns. Among Us, St. Brown had 950 yards and seven touchdowns. And then TJ Hawkinson had almost 900 yards and seven touchdowns. So good yards, but just no touchdowns really. The offensive line kind of leveled out towards the end of the year, except for one player I see. So Taylor Decker was our worst lineman by a mile with 14 sacks. That is not good for a like pure pass blocking lineman. Not pure because he's a solid run defender, but... He's much better as a pass blocker than he is as a run blocker. Panay Sewell was amazing. Only letting up four sacks as a right tackle is really good. Frank Ragnow let up three sacks, which is about what you expect from a center. Ali Udo was very good again, only letting up two sacks, so I'm very happy with how he's playing. Logan Stenberg, even though he wasn't a starter, let up a sack. And then Jonah Jackson, zero sacks on the year. What a god. I almost traded him away admittedly, and I am very, very glad I didn't. He has been amazing. So it looks like, honestly, other than left tackle, I'm gonna stick with the same offensive line for the next year. In terms of defense, Jameel Kirkpatrick led the team in tackles with 120. Mike Hughes came in at, sec at number two with 107. In terms of tackles for loss, they weren't great. Alex Anzalone had 11, Aiden Hutchinson had 10, and nobody else had 10 plus. And in terms of sacks, we were actually much better than last year. Jamison Howard had 10 and a half sacks as a rookie, so he was very good. And Aiden Hutchinson had 10 sacks in year number two, so he's been amazing so far. But other than those two, there was no interior pressure. Aleem McNeil led the team in sacks from the interior with one and a half. I mean, our like off-ball linebackers had more pressure than our interior. That's gross. In terms of interceptions though, Jamil Kirkpatrick, it's going to be a tough battle for Defensive Rookie of the Year, and I think both of these players are going to be top five with Jamil Kirkpatrick and Jamison Howard because Jamil Kirkpatrick had four interceptions. Mike Hughes had three, Jeff Okuda, Deshaun Elliott, and JC Jackson each had two, and a number of players had one. So, very good year statistically from certain players. Actually, most of our defensive players had very good years statistically. It's just certain ones kind of drag the team down, so... I think I know what I'm going to go for in this offseason. It's pretty blatantly obvious to me what the problems with this team were. So we were 7th in offense, 17th in defense. I'm surprised we were that good in terms of offense. And here, it seems like it's always the same top two. Patrick Mahomes wins MVP with Aaron Rodgers at number two. But I don't see any Lions in here, unfortunately. NFC, Aaron Rodgers wins Offensive Player of the Year and no oh no actually kyler murray came in at number 10 surprisingly for defensive player of the year that goes to aaron donald no lions surprisingly i thought we would see either hutch or that rookie linebacker or the rookie defensive end offensive rookie of the year goes to jay mcguire from the saints i'm guessing he is a quarterback and no lions up there and then defensive rookie of the year actually goes to jameel kirkpatrick i thought it was gonna go to jameson howard i mean personally i think jameson howard Howard had the better year, but I guess the four interceptions from Jameel Kirkpatrick were pretty good. I would have personally given that to Howard, and I kind of wish he got that to hopefully get a star dev, but hopefully he gets one anyways. And then no other Lions in there, unfortunately, and I want to see where we placed for individual ones. So Kyler Murray gets 10th for best QB, DeAndre Swift gets 9th for best running back, Somehow no receivers with a 1,400 yard receiver and a 1,200 yard receiver. I guess it's just the touchdowns. Frank Ragnow somehow gets number 10 for best lineman, even though I think Jonah Jackson or Ali Udo were much better. For best D lineman, no lion. That's really weird. Best linebacker, no line lions even. That's really surprising. In best DB, Mike Hughes comes in at number 10. So really, really weird year, but I think I know what we need to do in this off season. So let's go there and hopefully we can finally elevate this team to at least a playoff contender.
So we do have an upgrade in the staff week, which means, yeah, okay, Jamil Kirkpatrick gets an upgrade. And I'm kind of curious, I want to see if he got a dev up, or at least what his development trait is. Okay, he does have superstar now, did he have that? Or, yeah, okay, he got that actually, he went up to a superstar dev, so he was just a star, but now he's a superstar, so that's really cool. And the New Orleans Saints take down the Baltimore Ravens 42-35 to in the Super Bowl with their rookie quarterback. That's interesting. And in terms of re-signings, I think I'm just gonna sign some depth players so I don't have to worry about that later on. Cause most of these players are depth players anyway, anyways, but yeah, I'll do that and then I'll see you guys in free agency. All right, so in free agency, there are not amazing players here, but I definitely know what I am going to go for. Now, funny enough, we have the combo that we had in the last Lions rebuild in Aaron Rodgers and Kareem Hunt available. So if I wanted to do that, I could bring them back. However, I definitely do think I want at least one of them. And that is going to be Kareem Hunt. I know I get him a ton in my rebuilds, but that's because he plays amazing in Sim. So we'll definitely try to bring him in. We'll relegate uh, DeAndre Swift to that, I guess, receiving back role. Which, I guess he might not even be that, because Kareem Hunt is a good receiving back too, so... We're kind of just completely replacing DeAndre Swift in every regard, but I don't feel too bad about that, because he hasn't been very good and I don't trust him for this year. I do want a solid number two tight end, so we'll bring in Antonio Gandy-Golden, who, if you didn't know, I'm pretty sure the Washington Commanders are trying him at tight end, which I don't know if I love that, because I did really like him as a receiver, but you know, you do you, boo. Oh, and I realized I have to take Brandon Linder out of my rosters. I keep forgetting to do that. There are a couple players, him and Gronk, I have to take out of my rosters because they retired. Which, can we talk about that? It's really weird Brandon Lyard Linder just randomly retired. He was one of the better centers in the NFL and a very underrated player, and then he just kind of retired. I think he had, like, concussion concerns, I guess, or I don't, I don't know the reason, but probably what it was. I might give Howard star dev, because he didn't dev up at all after getting 10 sacks. I think I'm just going to give it to him anyways. And I think now I know what the position I'm going to trade for at the beginning of next year is going to be, because there aren't really any players here that are good at that position. So yeah, I definitely know what position I'm going to go for. Let's try to bring in Drew Tranquil just to have a good starting linebacker to play pretty much wherever. I don't really care that much about money this year because, I mean, this is the last year. It doesn't really matter. Also, I just want to point this out. Lamar Mitchell was a very, very good player in limited snaps. So he only played 530 snaps, which was a little less than half the year. But he only allowed eight catches, got three pass deflections, which is a very good amount for Madden, even though that's not good for real life at all. He got a sack and a half, four tackles for loss, and 27 tackles. That was a really good year as a rookie. I might give him more playing time next year. All right, so here in free agency, I'm doing some weird stuff. So obviously you already saw we're bringing in Kareem Hunt, Drew Tranquil, and Antonio Gandy-Golden, but I'm also offering Jack Conklin a contract. Obviously, Taylor Decker was not very good last year at left tackle. I think he was decent in his first year, but last year, I was just really disappointed with how he played. And really, he's getting paid like 16 million a year. I would rather have Jack Conklin at just about 11 million per year playing left tackle rather than Taylor Decker, and if I really wanted to, I can move Panay Sewell to left tackle or something like that. I don't think I'm going to, but theoretically I could do that. But let's sim a week, let's see who we get here, and then I will likely just see you guys for the 2023 NFL, or 2024 NFL Draft. Alright, so we get Jack Conklin, we get Drew Tranquil, and we get Kareem Hunt. But Antonio Gandy-Golden didn't reject us, but he still hasn't signed. I expect him to this week, even if he doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, he's a number two tight end. I just want a good number two, because I feel like they would get a lot of playing time in this offense. And he does accept, but we have fifth year options. Actually, these don't matter, because we wouldn't need to re-sign him anyways. I'm not going to pick up Jeff Okuda's fifth year, because he hasn't been very good, and... 
Yeah. So now I'll just see you guys in the draft. Hopefully there's some good players. So it actually looks like the Kyler Murray trade wasn't good for either of us because the Cardinals have the number one overall pick. I don't think that was a pick we traded them, at least I sure hope not. But we have the number seven overall pick. Let's sim to that. And I think it's pretty obvious what position I'm gonna look for. Even if I do find a good player at that position, I am still likely going to trade for one, but let's take a quick look. Hopefully there are some good players here. I think I'm going to go Terrence Dorsett here. He is 6'6", 307, only 22 years old out of UCF. He has A tackle, A impact block, but we don't really know anything else about him, unfortunately. I do like the D pursuit, but he ran a 4'8'2 at the combine and, foot and put up 40 reps on the bench. He also had a really good 20 yard shuttle, so let's take him. And he does have hidden dev. He also has 95 strength, 78 speed. This man is a freak, and hopefully he has a pretty good overall. Here, I think I'm gonna take Pat St. Louis out of Notre Dame. He is 6'3", 197, only 21 years old. He ran a 4.56 at the combine. He has B awareness, A block shed, B hit power, B tackle, C zone. So definitely more of a run defender, but yeah, he definitely looks like a good player, so let's take him. And he does have hidden dev. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure about him, because the free safeties in this class were fully scouted for us, and they all looked terrible. They were all potential UDFAs, except for one player later on. It was like a third or fourth round talent or something. But the strong safeties all looked very good, and... Pat St. Louis was one of them, so he might end up starting at free safety for us this year. Either him or Deshaun Elliott. Probably Deshaun Elliott, actually. <laughs> Alright, and just for fun, because I saw this player and he looks decent, we're gonna take Marquez Craig. Actually, I lied. He doesn't look that good. Alright, with that, I think I'm just gonna sim out the rest of the draft. There isn't really much else here that looks too good to pass up on. So hopefully the CPU can draft some good players and I will see you guys for the start of the third and final year of the rebuild. Okay, so maybe I should have stayed picking players instead of handing it over to the CPU because Terrence Dorsett is a 78 overall. He has 95 strength, 80 block shed. He's not a great pass rusher, which is the reason I drafted him, but he is at least a very good player 83 or 80 tackle, I guess, technically. Good play rec. Just overall a very good player. Again, I wish he was better in terms of pass rush, but he's a stud, so I can't complain too much. And Pat St. Louis is a 74 overall. That's actually much better than I thought he would be. I thought he would be like a 70, 71 around that range. He's not the fastest in the world, but for a pretty much a box safety, that's pretty good, 87 speed. But yeah, he doesn't have much coverage. His coverage isn't terrible, but he definitely does look more like a box safety than anything else. Cause he does have solid tackling, pursuit, hit power, all that stuff. So yeah, I think we'll move to Sean Elliott to free safety and start him at strong. And then the rest of the draft wasn't good. Once I turned it over to the CPU, they really didn't do anything and picked players at positions we don't need. It drafted a tight end in Terrence Smart at 67 over. Overall. It took two 68 wide receivers, neither of them have dev traits, and a backup left guard. All positions we really don't need at all. So, again, I wish I kind of took more players, but either way, I can't complain too much about those two players, and now it is time for my blockbuster trade. Alright, so here we are doing a straight up player for player trade. We are trading Taylor Decker, who was very disappointing last year, Levi Onzerike, and Derek Barnes in return for John Franklin Myers. Now obviously, like I already said, we're going to play Jack Conklin, who we signed in free agency at left tackle, and hopefully he does better than Taylor Decker did last year. And we just really need interior pressure, and I think John Franklin Myers can definitely help bring that. I think he's one of the more underrated players in the entire NFL. So I thought that was a very good move. I think it was a bit too much to give up for him, but it's the last year, so honestly, I don't really care. And we're gonna cut Michael Brockers. He's making 10 million a year as like our fifth defensive tackle. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Sorry, bud. <sighs> that 
that's something. All right, here is a look at the team going into the third and final year of the rebuild. And if you saw just a few seconds ago, Aaron Rodgers is sitting, he was sitting in free agency and he obviously plays very well in this game. So I was like, if Kyler sucks at the midseason point, I think I'll just switch in Aaron Rodgers and We'll see how that goes. And the other main difference with this year, obviously, is we added Jack Conklin. And I think I'm actually going to play Panay Sewell at left tackle because he only let up four sacks last year. And obviously, you want to get as few sacks from that left tackle position as you can, if that makes any sense. And I think Panay Sewell will give us the chance to do that. This receiving core is amazing. I mean, our fourth receiver is an 83 overall. It's not like we have an absurd number one, but it's just a very good group. And obviously the addition of Kareem Hunt is very nice as well. Just overall, this offense is amazing at an 87 overall, so that's pretty good. And this defense is honestly very good too, obviously trading for John Franklin Myers. Now that wasn't quite a blockbuster trade, and I think we had to overpay to get him. But he is still a very good player at an 85 overall. He's the number 8 ranked defensive tackle. So I guess that kind of was a blockbuster trade if you think about it like that. Like a top 8 defensive tackle is pretty good. But just the rest of this defense in general is either A already very good or B has the potential to be very good. The rookie Pat St. Louis is a very good strong safety, at least very good looking strong safety and I think he should do pretty well there, we'll have to see. This cornerback room is very good with the addition of JC Jackson. This defensive line, other than the interior, has played very well, but now the interior is completely revamped, also adding Terrence Dorsett, who is one of the better players I've ever taken in this game. He doesn't provide much as a pass rusher, but that's what John Franklin Myers will do and they are both good run defenders. And this linebacking core is still not amazing, but it looks like it has a lot of potential, obviously with the now second year player, Jamil Kirkpatrick with superstar development, of course, at only what, 23 years old? Is that what that said? Yeah, 23 years old. Mitchell played well in limited opportunities last year and Drew Tranquil is a solid player. So here's a look at the specialists. I don't think I'm really gonna change much with this, although I normally do. I think I'm just going to keep it mostly the same. And let's sim out this year. I will see you guys at the mid-season point of year number three. All right, at the mid-season point of year number three, we are disappointing once again. Only at three and three. It's not the worst record, obviously, but it's a lot worse than I would want it to be. And I am going to bench Kyler Murray. He is not having a good year once again. Only having 1,500 yards, only seven touchdowns, and four interceptions. The running game isn't even going well. Kareem Hunt only has 266 yards. He does have eight touchdowns, but I mean, getting a rushing touchdown doesn't really require a ton of skill. The receiving core has yards, I guess. The line, huh. It looks like it was a mistake to get Jack Conklin. I don't know how he's letting up nine sacks at right tackle already, while Panay Sewell has two at left tackle but whatever. The pass rush is actually pretty solid. Aiden Hutchinson is leading the team with four sacks, John Franklin Myers has three and a half, Terrence Dorsett has two and a half, and Jamison Howard only has one and a half this year. <clears throat> but yeah, this is gonna be a weird end to this rebuild. I am benching Kyler Murray. I regret trading for him. You know what? I'm actually gonna do something real quick. We're gonna make this extra, in extra interesting. Uh... <laughs> This is a bit questionable. <laughs> we are trading Kyler Murray to the Dallas Cowboys in return for Tyron Smith, Micah Parsons, and Trayvon Diggs. This rebuild has gone off the rails, but I'm, I'm okay with it. I promised that we were gonna be not super realistic in this one, and oh boy, I have not been realistic at all. So now Jack Conklin will be moved to a depth player, and honestly, nine sacks. No, I'll keep him on the team. I was going to cut him. But yeah, we'll keep him on the team. Now, Aaron Rodgers is going to be the starter. We add Micah Parsons. I'm going to play him at right outside linebacker. He's not going to play. And we add Trayvon Diggs to be our number two corner. Hopefully, he doesn't let up 900 yards for us, but we'll see. Yeah, this, this rebuild's really gone off the rails. And we actually do have a tandem breakout. I don't know who that's going to be for at all. I guess it's for... 
JC... Oh, no, it's for Mike Hughes, and it's JC Jackson doing it? Or wait, no, it's Mike Hughes wanting to be... I have no idea what's happening here. We'll give him XP and a ratings boost for the next game? I don't know. And we have some upgrades here. Let's see who that is for. Just some depth players, pretty much, and Deshaun Elliott. So yeah, I guess with that, I will sim to the end of the year. Hopefully we're in the playoffs. Honestly, I don't think we're going to be with how shitty this game is, but we'll, we can hope that we'll be in the playoffs. We can pray. Let's sim there. I should stop talking now. I'm saying way too much. That doesn't really mean anything. Hopefully we're in the playoffs. If we're not, I'm genuinely going to cry. Okay, so before I show our finishing record for the year, let's just be sure to take a quick second to drop a like and a sub on the video and turn on notifications for my channel. It literally takes you two seconds to do that, and it helps me out more than you could imagine. It helps push this video to so many more new people. So if you would take a quick second to do that, I would appreciate that a ton. I know it's selling out, but it is very important. I really want this channel to grow and do well. And be sure to comment down below what team I should rebuild next, because again, comments help with interaction and all that stuff. And I'm genuinely curious about what you guys want to actually see. So be sure to do all that. But here is one look at the team before we get into the playoffs. Just a quick look. I'm not going to go into depth because I'll do that at the very end of the video. Micah Parsons is at a 99 overall. That's pretty cool. But this year, we finished 11-6. So we definitely rebounded based on where we were at the midseason of the year. And quick tip for you, never trade for Kyler Murray in Madden, apparently, because he does not play very well. I mean, I kind of knew that before just from my experience with this game and just how players do in Sim. And yeah, Kyler Murray just isn't very good in this game for whatever reason. I think he's overrated in real life a little bit, but especially in Madden, he doesn't do very well. Aaron Rodgers did pretty well this year with 34, almost 3,500 yards, only four yards away from that, 28 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions is kind of a lot. You gotta keep in mind, he only played half a year. So 11 is quite a lot. 72% completion percentage is very good. In terms of rushing, Kareem Hunt was not good. I have never seen that. Normally he's one of the better running backs in Sim in this game, but he only had 3.8 yards per carry. He did, however, have 18 touchdowns, but again, rushing touchdowns aren't really a testament to skill. It's just kind of getting used in the position to get a touchdown, if that makes any sense. Receiving was finally good this year. In, in terms of touchdowns, I mean, and even then it wasn't amazing. Mike Williams had almost 1,500 yards, or I guess not quite, but over 1,400 yards with nine touchdowns. Jamison Williams had 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. TJ Hawkinson had 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns. Among Us, St. Brown had 800 yards and five touchdowns. DJ Chark with less than 200 yards and a touchdown as our wide receiver four. So it looks like it was a very good decision to go and trade for Tyron Smith. He had two sacks at the point we traded for him and only let up three in the rest of the year. Jack Conklin let up almost double the sacks that Tyron Smith let up all year and Jack Conklin played less than a third of his snaps. So basically, Jack Conklin theoretically would have let up 27 sacks while Tyron Smith only let up five. That is wild. Panay Sewell was a bit worse when he moved back to right tackle, but still was solid, I guess, letting up nine sacks on the year. Jonah Jackson had a big down year compared to last year, letting up eight sacks from the guard position. Not ideal. It looks like every one of our linemen had a down year from where they played in the year before. Frank Ragnow letting up four sacks, Ali Udo letting up three. In terms of defense, Jamil Kirkpatrick led the team in tackles with 120, Drew Tranquil had 108, and Mike Hughes was only three away from 100 with 97. Quick math. Uh, John Franklin Myers led the team in tackles for loss with 16. Micah, Parkin, Micah, Parkins? Micah Parsons had 14. I don't know how many of those were actually on the Cowboys compared to how many were with us, but still a very good amount. Aiden Hutchinson had 11 tackles for loss. Drew Tranquil and Jamison Howard each had eight. In terms of sacks, Again, I don't know how many were with the Cowboys, but Micah Parsons led the team with 11. John Franklin Myers had 10. Aiden Hutchinson had eight and a half. And Jamison Howard had a down year with six, but six is still solid. 
And Terrence Dorsett actually had four and a half, even though he didn't get full st full starting snaps and he's not a pass rusher. Jamil Kirkpatrick and Pat St. Louis led the team in interceptions with four each. So I was definitely right about Pat St. Louis being a good player. Getting four interceptions as more of a box safety is very good. Trayvon Diggs only had three interceptions compared to his 11 in real life this last year, but that's still very good for Madden numbers. JC Jackson and Mike Hughes each had two, and Aiden Hutchinson and Drew Tranquil each had one interception. So very improved year compared to last year, especially in the second half of this year. I'm very happy with how this team performed. We have some upgrades here. Who's this going to be? Oh, just backup left tackle. <clears throat> but here in the wild card, we are taking on the San Francisco 40 Winers. They went 10 and 7 this year. We have them by two overall. Let's do this press conference thingy, whatever. I don't know if these have literally any effect on the game. We'll go play it cool. I'm not going to guarantee a win. So I guess if you go guarantee win, it's I think it gives the 49ers morale and then gives your team a little less morale or something like that. And then if you win, you get a big boost there or something. I think it's like risk reward, but there's no point in doing that here. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. So let's do it. And we take down the 49ers, putting up 49 on the 49ers. That is beautiful, dude. Fuck the 49ers. I'm glad we shit on them. So I don't know if we get literally anything from this, but we have a re a recap, I guess you would say, of the win. Oh, we get staff points. Okay, I guess I'll take that. <clears throat> but we have some upgrades here. Let's see what this is. Grant Stewart. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> but here we are taking on the Dallas Cowboys in the divisional round. We have six overall on them. They have a good offense, but their defense is pretty bad after we robbed them of literally all their good players. I guess now that I think about it, why the hell did they do that trade? They have Dak. Why did they do that? I'm not going to question it. We fleeced them, but they still went 13-4, and four, so they're fine. But let's sim this out. And we do beat them. Even if we lost to them, I would have been okay with it because we scammed them. And they kind of deserved to beat us because of what we did to them. But I'm happy we beat them. And here we're taking on the Green Bay Packers. We're just getting my least favorite teams this whole playoff run. I don't hate the Cowboys that much, but I hate the Packers. They're maybe the my least favorite team in the NFL just because of their fans. I don't like teams that have asshole fans. I'm not saying every fan of those teams are assholes. Aaron Rodgers is wearing number six. I'm going to change that. So that basically just brings down both teams' uh, running ability. But Aaron Rodgers is going up against his former team. I guess we're not going to give him his number back. We'll give him 10. That looks a little better. I guess we'll just say that he is a new man now after moving on from the Packers. I don't know, dude. But here we have a playoff rivals thing here. I guess we'll go chess match because our defense is younger and, you know, I guess that would help us out more. Bring up some of that awareness and hot opponent. This could be really, really good for us. We'll go be confident again. I think that equals it out for both of us. And I didn't even think about this being a rivalry game. I guess it is because they're division rivals. It isn't much of a rivalry in real life because, you know, the Lions aren't really that good and the Packers are pretty good every year, but, you know, it is a divisional rivalry. So here, let's see if we can take down the Green Bay Packers, and we cannot, losing 49-39. to 39. It's been a lot of high-scoring games. It looks like our defense isn't very good. Shocker, I know. But here is one final look at the team. Obviously, pretty different from the actual Lions. I mean, in terms of starters, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actual Lions players. So it is a pretty different team, but it is a very good team at an 88 overall and a, a pretty well balanced team. I mean, Going into this last year, our defense was looking pretty bad, but we really fixed it this year. But again, if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to drop a like, a sub, turn on notifications for my channel, and comment down below of what, with what team you want me to rebuild next, or what type of rebuild you want me to do next. 
Let's see if we can hit 15 likes on this video once again because we've been hitting that goal on the last few videos. And once again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. The support has been really amazing lately. This channel's already doing pretty well even though I've only been doing it for a few months and honestly kind of half-assed because depression is a bitch and motivation is kind of hard to come by, but I've been trying my best. So again, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.